Welcome everybody, welcome to TeamFortress.tv, this is I, Toro Tams, and I'm not alone, I've got a merry of cast and crew with me as we've been kind of dragged along to go and cover some NTF2LCL, oof, that's going to be an awful, uh, it's the French Cup, it's the French Mix Cup, it's the Draft Cup, it's the Fun Cup, Dave, how are we doing? Doing pretty well. I, uh, you know, I decided to have some fish and chips for lunch to get myself prepared to patriotically represent England while we are here just mocking the French generally. Well, that's all right. I've got all my baguettes and croissants in the fair. But uh, meanwhile, Denmark, who's enjoying a lovely bit of a, oh, what do they have over there, skira, or is that just Scandinavian in general? Anyway. We got Beta here in the production desk. He's going to be pressing all the buttons, showing all the brackets, and uh, showing all the spectacle wonder of the French Cup. Now, Dave, I'm not sure if you've heard of NTF2LCL at all, but uh, it's quite an infamous cup. It's a cup that has been running in the background of the French community. I think it started back in the uh, TF2 Connection uh, days. And it was a really fun cup that players love to play from both from the premiership background to the lowly, lowly noob from these fresh meat cups and all that. Because it gets them all mixed together here, Dave. They go through a huge, massive system of uh, pointing players and who gets on what teams and whatnot. And it's always made for very close and fun TF2. So Dum Dum thought it would be a very good idea to get this onto the TFTV. And I agree. What about you, Dave? Yeah, I agree. I think... One of the best things about the kind of French scene for years and years and years has been they've had kind of more grassroots tournaments, more grassroots uh, kind of arrangements of you know, things. Even even just you know double mixes, infamous French double mixes all the time. And I think that's kind of been missing from kind of a lot of communities for the last kind of few years or so. It's kind of dropped out of fashion uh, for like the German league, you know, the German kind of community, the, the, even the, like the Russian community, not as popular, but the, the French community seems to have stepped it up and here we are. Yep, so just to kind of break down the schedule, we've got this cup happening over a weekend, over two days. So today is Saturday, it is their first day, day one will be just the round robin. So we've got eight teams, they're all going to play each other once in a best of one sort of bracket. So everyone gets their fair share of playing against each other and had a good show of it. And then from that point, they'll take those points. They'll determine the brackets going into tomorrow. But we'll go a bit more into that in the meantime, because we don't know when these players are going to start. So out of we're about four rounds in deep over onto this entire thing. I think we're, far, uh, the, we're covering the fifth round now. So, so far, we're just going to take the best two teams that I think have been plucked from this squad. But otherwise, it's been extremely close here. And if you're not recognizing these team names, because it's a draft game, so it's got, uh, I think we're going to be covering Granary Farmers versus Lumberjack Snake Walker. And believe it or not, we're going to be playing Snake Walker, and I think we're actually going into it. Yeah, we're live here. It's going to be uh, rolling out to this first mid. Both of these teams looking to see what the Cadiz K. It's been very close so far, but take us away the first mid turbot ups. All right, on to the first mid. You recognize Brugeman. That's a Prem player. He's playing Demoman in this squad of uh, the old Granary Farms. And let's see what they can kind of muster with. Everyone's just kind of feeling each other right, out right now. It's very typical of a mid. And the first couple of players will fall. You see aggressive. Uh, I think that's Mark III coming across and actually surviving as well. Gets the pick off clean up onto Ronnie. And poor Riz is left pissing in the wind. He will. Will go down, and with a medic down, that's only got means that demo man's got nothing to live for, and he will die for. Yeah, very, very aggressive, just across the point early. Medic nice and far forward, heals forward, and you know, they got the important frags onto the scouts and the soldiers, and that made there was really no way to defend the demo and the medic, and crucially, no way for the medic to escape either. No scout for him to escort him out, so very, very easy to finish him off, and now they have a new advantage. Now, obviously, we didn't get much time to go over the rules, all the little machinations of this cup, but I'll dri uh, trickle them out as we are getting capped up on the second point here. For example, first one that's been invoked, uh, only Scouts and Roma can play Sniper. So you won't see Demo, the Pocket Man, coming on to his uh, main class here in this cup. No, no, no. Only the uh, the fun classes get to have even more fun. That's, uh, that's going to be sad for Demord, I would say, but either way it's going to be an Uber coming in. They're going to take out the sentry gun, immediately locking down the left spawn. No cap time as yet, the scouts are going to have to deal with a couple of sickies on the point. 
but the rotation through the spawn has worked very, very well for the defensive side. It's they're still five against six though, and now the bombs are starting to come in. Big bomb in, but he is uh, cleaned up, not going to able to get too much damage down. Sosok is still walking about, looking to escape. Looks like the aggression is going to fade for now, unless Mac three. Nope, he can't do anything. Yeah, they're really taking the time over on the granary farmers, and as you know, more time means more respawn time. Those respawners were coming up slowly for the rest of the lumberjacks, so they're going to claim second point now. There's no back cap shenanigans I can see on my kind of hacky point of view, so it's up to Brugeman to just set up those stickies, kind of set up that easy sort of uh, defense for that midpoint. They're close to Uber charge, but not quite got it yet, whilst uh, they're making the push now over on the lumberjacks. Yes, they've also got uh -oh. Max playing on their own map, I guess, and it's going to be an Uber trade coming in. It looks like it's better for the granary farmers in the red. They're going to be able to lock some players in. Mac 3 has gone down, but they've been able to trade it out for a frag onto the demo. Well, actually, I believe that's African Communist. That's who was listed on the name for me, but he's got an alias at the moment, sadly. Hmm. Uh, they look like they're trying to make a re-push in over on the granary farmers, playing it brave on the grass area. And they will throw in one scout. Uh, I think that's actually someone dealing with uh, somebody in Saw. And they're actually uh, divvying up this fight very nicely, picking them apart. Poor Rims will go down towards the tail end there. So Nevo's going to have to make some work happen. He's actually focusing on Mark III, but Mark III just kind of swats that man down. And with the medic still kicking here on second point, second point claimed. Last point got no centrical, no nothing. Ronnie's coming up as heavy weapons guy now, but he's too slow to get to the fight. Will go down, just distract a few wise. And the demo man gets cleaned up. There's potential hope here for these lumberjacks, but then there's also a scout on the point as well. It will be the first round for that, those granary farmers. Yeah, very nicely played for granary farmers, just getting aggressive together, focus forward together on both that second point and that last point. It was uh, very cleanly played on second. They got themselves advantage. It looks like the spawners might have come up in time for the lumberjacks, but uh, it was just very smartly played around the point, playing the heels and focusing down the players who had to block. If you kind of wondered, Turbo, what the hell are some of these players doing? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Some players, they're all mixed skill here, Dave. Need I might remind you. So everyone's got their own take and uh, different you know, aspects of things. And they've never played on team before. It's going to get a bit dicey. But as the game and the tournament continues, I'm sure that uh, that rapport will build between all their team and squad. But for now, it seems like they're clapping back a bit over on the Lumberjacks as they've actually got them on the back foot here on this mid, pushed them across the line. They're holding steady though over on Farmers and not really too many tagged souls either. It's all up to Marcel whether or not this bomb's going to work out. He goes for the medic, does force out the Uber and will lose his life. Ribs is kind of caught a little bit in No Man's Land, doesn't dare go into the thing. Now, finally, Braves back into the sawmill, goes back out with his team. Will might, might get forced out here, will be forced by these two soldiers of the Granary Farmers, but that's a lot of blood being shed for that lowly medic Uber. Yeah, and everyone dropped very, very low for the farmer's side. There's one guy hiding this soldier, um, put a, in, uh, sorry, in kitchen is uh, trying to just go unheard, unseen, but he's going to end up far behind with not too much health. Oh no, Ronnie's going to find him and actually got, instantly guns down the man because he was still uh, running the skill stick. Will go down in the end, and yeah, that's one less player for the upcoming defense. Fortunately, they haven't quite got the Ubers left. I mean, the Uber charge ready for the lumberjack. So they'll, they'll know the human the idea of maybe going towards the door, they're just maybe setting up in this lobby area for now. Yeah, first opportunity for the Lumberjacks to do yep. some kind of offense. They've got a little bit of Uber magic, so they're going to take the Uber in through the right side, through the shutter. Sentry gun is going to go down in that spawn door. There was a sniper up briefly. He's now going to swap off. There's going to be a heavy, actually, perfume coming up, but there's scouts on the point, and no Very one there nice. to block. Yeah, I think they were so uh, distracted by the Roro soldier, he was just kind of giving them a lot to deal with initially. We didn't go down in the first sort of wave of those players coming out of spawn, and they just double scouted it on the point times four. I think even the medic got involved times five. How can you beat that on last? Absolutely no chance. Um, yeah, very clearly done. We're back at 1-1. It looks like it is going to be a close one. 
You know, these teams have been working with a draft system. They have to buy these players, you know, and some of these players aren't cheap, but some of them are very cheap, you know, based on their, their radical TF2 ideas. But it makes for a very balanced TF2 experience. So, so far in this fifth round of our tournament. Oh, Mark 3 being kind of air shot and pushed back. They're gone down, but they do respond in kind with a Roro frag. And it's still a bit kind of playing, you know, each other's battleships, playing on each other's half of the maps. Finally, Brugeman gets involved, lays out some foundation damage to push the rest of those Lumberjacks out of their own mid. Pute is in, he's gonna nuke down Rivs with two perfect rockets, did everything on the mid fight, did the nice counter bomb, took all the space, and then seized the opportunity as the players were retreated back onto second, claimed Evo. the medic, and now they're gonna try oh, and no. keep Sussex alive. The, the Prem Scout running around, being a nuisance. He's managed to get in. He's on top of the Medic. Does force out that Uber Charge. There's more blue players around this oh, Medic than no. there is red players. Poor, poor Sostic has to keep running. Might have to go down. The uh, Poop comes back to try and... Uh, and they actually kill the, uh, the Scout who's going aggressive. Actually keeps their Medic alive. Very well played from uh, Sostok. Yeah, he uh, hit a nice little surf in what looked like a very awkward situation. You know, sometimes surfing, even when you have that Uber up, is, is important in terms of keeping oh. yourself alive. But at the moment, it's, it's uh, very scrappy. Seems Granary Farm has got a little bit of uh, conciliation on this midpoint now. They have a little bit of control. They have most of the players up just waiting for back three. And they have a slight Uber advantage, but it's going to be difficult to push with 20 yard. Finally, we've got some peace and quiet in this uh, in this game, Dave. It's been absolute non-stop action between these two teams. We can go over the real content piece. That's the rule. Let's keep, let's flick through some more pages while these two are playing some death stairs at each other. Although, they do have an overcharge advantage yeah. over on the farmers. Let's cut that page for a moment. As we're going in with an Uber right on top of Ribs. Ribs is not having a good time. This server constantly being me uh, down. And uh, maybe these blue players, these remnants of... The Lumberjacks can make something happen, but they go into a nice defensive position over on the Granary Farmers, way back to protect and delay any sort of push. That's where you can see Sosak obviously had a very clear idea of the small Uber advantage they had, and Rivs had no idea was caught. Just standing in the holding kind of default medic position for when it's equal. Probably obviously assumed it was equal, but no, there was 20 add for the farmers to push off. They're able to kill the medics, and now they can convert it to a loop advantage onto last as well. It's going to be an interesting skill set from this point on, Dave. As players, you might notice that they are excellent like scouts, soldiers, medics, but are they good leaders? Are they good teachers here as they will have to kind of uh, flex some skill on <laughs> nice little pre shot from Robo to deny Bruchman of that big jump and look at the amount of uber wasted there's a nice times two cap a lot of t cap time that's going to put a little pressure but they do clean up that scout that uh, started off capping <gasps> they get uh, Pew onto the point and just claims it right under the no their noses here that's got to be stinging if you're over on the side of the lumberjacks yeah very very nice his initial scout though got so much cap to it uh, which did a lot of work. It was eventually blocked, but you know, once you've got the 90% cap to start with, you've got to commit players to the point they had just one guy step off it for a second, and it's game over. Just made me wonder, where's the fat man? Where are these other classes that are kind of bat on passing this uh, point? But say la vie, it's just around at the end of the day. Let's see if they can clap on back on this third mid so far. Fourth mid so far, I can count. All right, Marcel. He's caught. He's actually behind. He's given uh, 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 Amarok a bit of uh, worrying about, but actually cleans up the soldier. So there's oh, nice shot coming out from Roro. Uh, a little air shot will kind of spell the end of that mid fight for the farmers. You say that, but the main thing is that they do still have a medic. They're gonna have to duke away from Roro, who's in behind but, them. But there's only two combat classes. Oh, well. uh, excuse me, Puke came behind. There was three combat classes. Surprise attack. Neva, he's got, he's manning up. He's, he's a scout versus demo man. Oh no, and now it's a demo man with no, nothing real. Oh, Ooh, nice that's point. a nice little fight. Oh, he's a nice little ballerina twirl before he fell to his death. And Bougeman actually giving a bit of uh, hope to these demo man Ubers everywhere. Oh, the Sostick! Just let me show you how it's done, kid! Says the uh, Sostick on. Right, very nice, I guess, comeback from this mid fight. Yeah, I kept flipping round. They had the heels, they had the Uber. They didn't have too many classes 
look for a minute like they were gonna go aggressive take an uber then suddenly the scout gets dropped out of it it looks really bad for them but Ooh. that's the point they're throwing Big one place. soldier in. They're throwing in a demo man as well. Rivs, oh, can he dodge the second soldier? He actually um, Mark three instead. Of, oh, was that an shot? I think it was. As uh, they will try and clean up any other error extenders here from the rest of the farming squad. They're back. They're going back to the crops and they're trying to take their tools with them. And they're still being pushed. And they're actually giving up so much ground, they're starting to cap here. Oh, poor Amarok has been uh, at nuked during all of this chaos. They will force out the Uber with Marcel, and things are a bit chaotic. Rivs uh, equalizes with his own Uber charge now to kind of lay stability in this. But if they keep taking trades like they do over on the farmers, their respawners will eventually kick in. But Marcel, with a pivotal sort of fight in the sawmill, will get a lot of damage and two kills to boot. They throw in one last soldier to maybe turn things around onto Riz, but will be defended by the rest. And I think Pute is actually going to go back into the spawn as well, just to play kind of hidey hole. They've got some forward spawns here because everyone chased into Saw to try and finish off that medic flag and utilize that better Uber that they had got. They're slightly delayed in capping, but. They're going sniper. to be able to lock down this forward spawn, or are they? Sniper and forward spawn. Ribs? Sniper? Potential? Worry? Scared? I am. I'm, I'm, where's the sniper point of view? God, he is playing it delayed and he will wait for eternity. He's scared of these stickies. He's actually going back. Uh, oh. All that time wasted for nothing, from my point of view. Alright. What have we got on last to deal with? We've got a sentry gun, we've got a sniper. We always have a demo man, and we have a hiding soldier. They Uber in pretty early. There's, uh, they're trying to focus on Sostic, but Sostic actually Banny binds all the way back, and they do uh, kill off the soldier, uh, the sentry gun, I should say. And they've got a heavy weapons guy. This is looking like a very fruitful last defense already. They're keeping everyone alive. Keep in mind, Dave. So they're gonna have a lot to kind of re-push out with. The demo man even goes down as well. So there's no demo man factor on that second point. There's one last soldier to look at, and he's trying to just get away best he can. Yeah, disastrous last push. Oh my push. god! Oh, did anybody get the license plate of that soldier? God, that was a nice little drive-by from Pew. Yeah, they pick him up and they know there's not going to be anyone behind. They know there's no threat at the back up. Everyone was in front of them. Spawned up now, but they are going to have to deal with a, a large Uber advantage for the farmers trying to come in through the kitchen area. Just baiting a little bit, trying to get in for free if they can. Often uh -huh. a little bit perilous when you're going in through kitchen, but they've negotiated it perfectly. Ronnie did not get the rest of the memo there. He's like, I thought we were defending mid. No, we are not, sir. They have got a big, scary Uber charge, and they are not afraid to use it. Okay, they were a little afraid to use it because they're taking their time here on second point. They could go into this lobby area and take the fight to them, but instead, why do that? You can just think, give them the second point for free. <gasps> nice little jump from Marcel. Will force that Uber charge out of the hand of Sauce Stick, but it could be worse, could be better. Looked a little bit of a pussy pop for me. It went down to about 80 health, but the soldier was quite far away. And I think it would have had to have been a long range direct to, you know, actually drop the medic there. So pops a little bit uh, easily, but at the end of the day, they did get that that midpoint for free as well. So they've uh, it's worked out okay for them overall. You know, keep in mind, Dave, when you're like uh, some of these players, you've got your heroes, you've got some of your French community members here to impress and you don't want to just uh, lose and drop an Uber, you know. Nevo's not going to be impressed by that, but he will be impressed with taking out Bougeman, this demo man, and laying possibly... Oh, actually, there's a back cap, lots of back cap happening. Everybody has to go back to deal and um, the, the safety of this last point, but they breathe a sigh of relief, they do a quick head count, and they realise all the rest of the players are ahead of them and they can cap second point with some peace. Yeah, they are going to have to... They actually got the force out, I guess, via that backup, so... It's going to be Sosak with the Uber back in tow with the adv large advantage as well. Moving in through Saw at the moment, to the pin, everyone back. Ronnie takes a ton of damage, and he actually gets caught as well. Have by mm -hmm. with himself. Amarok does overextend and go down. That's not ideal if you want to cap out the second point, but the Uber charge is still just too scary. That last point leaving is too scary as well. They will just go back and lay a nice defense. And I was hoping they would change classes to lay a nice defense, but no, we can stick with Cookie Cutter, I guess. There we go, there's the, there's the engineer. Yeah, back three goes in deep before the engineer is set up, but only gets damaged out onto the demo man and nothing onto the medic. 
So at the moment you can see Granary Farm is playing very kind of calculated, very very kind of in control of everything, just utilizing their advantages when they have them, taking a point here or there, uh, you know, trying to push for free when they can, but also knowing that they're, they're taking, they're taking you know, minor risks and just playing it very, very safe and controlled. Hey, this isn't a class check, this is an actual spy in the server. We've got Mark Faree showing a bit of a uh, Mark Sneak. Let's see what you can kind of cook up with over on the spy class. We'll be cloaking in now. Nothing hairy about his entryway. Does have the ability to tell his teammates what they're dealing with, what sort of corners are there. Instead, might be just aiming to get... To oh, did he get bumped into there? I don't think so. There's uh, he's just going to play it cool. He's, Rivs is bumping right into him. They've spotted him. Roro has taken him out. And yeah, the security camera is not too good if you're just protruding and being bumped into. Oh, and while that's all been happening, Lobby has been a catastrophe. Granary Farm is losing three, including their medic. And now it's going to be easy for Lumberjacks to take second. They're going to worry a little bit of the threat of maybe a backup. There's one guy hiding. He's hiding towards kind of cheese saw area behind that little box looking for some kind of bomb because he knows that ribs is coming up to 100 if they move through sort of so they're going to check the corners uh, they, they actually twizzled someone around oh. they actually got the drop onto ribs so very very nice uh, play from Pew Pew uh, yeah that's completely flipped the table of the turn it's for the uh, the the farmers they're looking pretty good now and their two their lead of 2-1 is looking still strong yeah very much back in their favour. They're going to catch uh, Marcel actually lower as well. So nice, easy frag there. He couldn't do what Putin done uh, just a moment ago. And now the jumpers are coming in, locking down the balcony area. Second is going to be very, very easy. And they're still building up Uber, ready to move into last. All right. Let's see what they've got to contest. We've got sentry gun being built up. We've got Nebo and the sniper. The scout's going to have all the fun need, I remind you. And yeah, Ribs just chilling, hanging back near the shutter door. They do lose one. Oh, Ribs goes down as well, sadly. Then they moved the sentry gun just as the Uber kit charge came in. And they've isolated the soldier before, uh, once he was jumping. It's only down to this the most experienced player on their team, that's Nevo, to kind of clean up and clutch here. How many scattered gun shots do you need to clean up near, uh, last? It seems too much. Yeah, when you get a shot like that, you need. <laughs> you need invincibility rather than scattergun shots, but either way, very well played by Granary Farmers, just utilising their advantages. Lumberjack's a little bit slow to set up on that last, particularly with that moving of the sentry gun as well, not having it set up and ready to go, and uh, once well, more ribs getting caught out, so at the moment Granary Farmers seem to be a step ahead. I think we need to have a name change here. It seems Granary Farmers are showing the, the Lumberjack Snake Water what to is <laughs> on their own map. But I'm sure it's not down to any sort of skill thing. There's just nice little placeholder names. They've got cool little logos as well if you want to check that out in Team Fortress TV. Anyway, over on the Team Fortress TV stream, we see Marcel. He's doing the first sort of aggressive foot. They're just pushing across all at the same time over on the Lumberjacks. And uh, the farmers are farming it ever so slightly. They have been left brattered and bruised a bit. A pure few actually dodging... Uh, expertly but not aware of it all these rockets from Roro and scouts rule supreme on this midpoint now i don't speak french that well it's been a few years since i did my kind of high school french but uh sosak said je suis bot which uh i don't know if you can translate that to other terms uh <laughs> I would happily translate. Let me uh, let me put it through the turbo computer. Boop, 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 boop. Um, I think he says the eyelet butts. Yeah, yeah, that must be it. That's that's. All oh, right, it means you're a bot. Okay, that's uh, the the more educated pl uh, amongst us in our production desk actually told us what it means. But uh, well, you know, it wouldn't be a tournament if we didn't have a bit of sass in between all the chat logs. And plus, I like our own interpretation interpretations of them. You know, it's much more fun this way. We can't Absolutely. interpret the naughty words this way, too. Yeah, I haven't seen, haven't seen too much BM thus far, but yeah, both teams settling down. Even Uber's Grand Revolvers 3 1 up have control this midpoint with uh, just under 9 minutes left, so very, very nice position for them at the moment. 
Yeah, I think they may be aware of it as well as I don't see them. You know, usually the person that has mid wants to go aggressive into these situations. I think they're just buying their time. Pew will go down, takes a soul with him, however, and maybe this might give enough confidence to the farmers to move into grass. But Roro hiding in the wings, aiming for the medic, going for the gold, doesn't quite get that, won't even get the silver. And they made their own sort of aggressive attempt over on Mark III, but he comes up uh, with nothing either. So. You know, delayed time is always winning time for all these granary farmers. The two rounds up and the time is clicking. There's a nice little entry from Rory there, but again, a nice surf from Sosa. Just can be difficult in those kind of really tight choke point areas to make sure you hit uh, kind of the vertical, sorry, the horizontal distance you need on those surfs to keep yourself alive. And he, he did that perfectly. All right, 100 percent overcharge a piece and lumberjacks it's going to be tempting to just sit here and hope that uh, they make the mistakes over on the farmers but i don't think the farmers want to give it away for free you've got to hope for like about a good number of mistakes in a row if you if this is your game plan here dave yeah they've got yeah, they, you never know really with draft teams exactly you know how many pages of the book they they have. Roro is looking to big stuff up in it low. There's a couple of players for him to potentially shoot, but they're all just baiting a little bit. They don't want to walk in through that, just through that door. Say no, it could be death. Yeah, a few going down over by the uh, the sawmill area. So that does make a flank kind of open. They have to rotate back over on the farmers to kind of make sure that doorway is not being abused. It has been abused slightly as they do lose the demo on Brugeman and now it allows the rest of the doors to kind of get compromised. They actually d decide to use the Uber to defend this mid. I think if they can get the Uber out of ribs, I like this decision, but I don't really see the Uber charge being popped anytime soon. Oh, okay, well, they just farmed that demo man who's hang hanging out at top instead. I mean, I like heals, but uh, that demo man does not like heals. He will just avoid and go down. Nevo is going to have to get a full fat Uber and do a lot of work at this point. He does get a scout. He gets a medic too. He's finding the bargains. Amarok actually turns around, slaps the, uh, the Prem so uh, scout back. And yeah, it is now curtains for the poor lumberjacks as everyone's left in a disarray everyone's respawned and nobody quite knows the flow of the game right now there's six minutes left and everyone's just trying to find somebody and they happen to be different colors every time they find someone yeah really well way to counter the fact that the the opponent their lumberjack opponents had that uber charge advantage they just played the high ground focused out the players away from the heel beam and made them, I think they dropped at least two players before the Uber even came out onto Nevo. Were able to kite the Uber pretty well. They lost the Medic for it, but at the end of the day, they were able to easily get the counter frags onto Nevo and Ribs as well. So now they themselves have a Uber charge advantage. They have the second point and uh, they can uh, push into last Ooh. one's more. Nice little surf from Ribs. Could have gone worse there. C catching a couple of pipes there, but you know, not, no harm, no foul, as Marcel is playing some scout shoot him up in the basement area we'll get a scout for his liking and hopefully maybe can get past the doorway we'll instead just go back to his team two rounds difference between these two teams five minutes left the pressure is definitely pushing over onto the lumberjacks as they're on the last point as well so they're gonna have to have perfect tf2 from this point on and it looks oh! That's what I'm talking about. So with that medic going down, dropping as well, need I remind, that will definitely be a push out. That will definitely be a <coughs> that will definitely be a push out. There we go. Now we're pushing out over the lumberjacks, but the hiding everybody. Oh God, Rivers goes down and drops as well. That's not perfect. Oh, it's a double drop. Not what you want to see. Not what they needed. Rory giving them such an opportunity, but Nevo is uh, looking to pressure forward regardless takes out Paput, but they are going to have to deal with this fully buffed combo moving in into the grass area. They don't have heals. They can't shoot the they scout. Heals. Look at him, it's one scout versus the world and he's not taking any damage. He's starting to believe he's actually killed a player. He's going around the flank, actually gets shot, but... Uh, 
they, uh, the rest of the blue squad just didn't amount to the same sort of impact, will be pushed back or sent to the respawn queue. There's a sentry gun defending last, the <laughs> farmers didn't they see that coming, Marcel will even hold the door and throw a couple of rockets Brugeman's way. A mark three times one warrior on this last point, they will turn back for that player. I'm not too sure about that, they've got an uber charge waiting, I think they could have just waited things out just a hot second, but they're going back in now. <gasps> and they're all oh. dropped during all that, maybe Pew will get a bit of this uber charge left but he's a soldier with like one rocket he actually uses one rocket and uber to get out it's been a little bit questionable the last couple of minutes from granary farmers throwing players in when they have uber charge advantages and not then be able to use it themselves but now the soldiers are <laughs> launching themselves in <laughs> right. has no chance Okay, in the autopsy uniform, we need to check Rivs' body, because I feel like the man's got magnets in him. He's just uh, drawing all the fire, all the hot shots into that, his body. Uh, Mark III turning things around. Nice little crossbows coming out from Sos Sock to uh, kind of keep his team healthy. Sadly, he can't shoot arrows into himself. Will go down. Marcel will get cleaned up, however. And it's a demo man versus the world. Uh, it will, it, he piped himself. I'm not sure. I didn't even know that was possible, but he did. Yeah, he just had the, the close range demo man, he uh, hits him off it, takes the self damage, goes down for it, and... Can the one the day, dominate he... themselves, Dave? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Can you dominate your teammate if you are healing a spy that stabs him four times? That's the real question. Oh, uh, Peter says yes. Immediately as well. Huh? This man's been. What's his games look like? I, you know, that's a question for a different day. Two minutes left. It's looking quite dead time. Cadus is probably throwing a fit right now. He's, he has to. He hates dead air. He hates dead time. He hates. Um, just. This game continuing. Two minute. They have to push over onto the Lumberjacks on their own home turf. Nevo will pop in. He gets a kind of uber <laughs> uh, uh, straight to on top of the medic. Will get that kill to start off for his uh, teammates. And they're left in a disarray over on Farmer. So maybe they can pick up the Rips kills instead. They can't quite find him. And yeah, second point being captured. Is it too late, however? I think it probably is. A minute and a half left there. Uh... They're going to have to take mid and all the way to last, and then, well, even if they do that in rapid time, they still need another right after that. So I think we're approaching garbage time, or just about starting garbage time here, sadly. But uh, there are more frags to be had. The only thing I can see for this team is if they get another round of the ball, they do count those. The score differences do come into the play on the tables, and everybody's been stealing games off each other. It's been very balanced, so it might actually come down to some round differences between all these teams, so uh, praise be, the Lumberjacks will have to keep going. Ribs will be forced out by Pew on this soldier, and Arrowrock is just taking a tour of mid. They've got 100% yeah. uber charge over on Farmers. Just waiting for the push-in now, Dave. Just don't want to drop any more rounds here. They're going to use the Uber out. They're going to get one frag for it. Uh, lose the armor themselves who wasn't behind. Rolling out, running on to the point. They're going to have to duel with back three. And he's going to sadly lose that duel. So, I don't know, 25 seconds left. One last push. Four versus five. We'll have to see how it goes for Lumberjacks. Still plenty of time left for an extra round. It feels like a long time, a uh, little time, but it's actually a long time in FPS land. Ten seconds left. If they just clean up these two scouts, okay. If they turn back time and then clean up those two scouts, it would have been possible. But I think it's all dead in the water now, Dave. Yeah, that's gonna be it. It's gonna be three one to the Granary Farmers. Take that out over the Lumberjacks, and yeah, very very nice stuff. At least for the first half of the map, they looked very competent. They looked very careful. A couple of misplays here towards the end, but uh, certainly looked just, just a step above. Wow. That was some exciting TF2. We had a bit of everything. We had how to play TF2 perfectly, how not to play TF2 perfectly, and all the bits in between. So, interesting. Dave, is there a kind of... What's your impressions of it? Do you think these teams would have been like more sort of attuned to these high level games of TF2 or is it uh, a bit lower than you expected? I think it's 
It's probably about what I expected. There were definitely, you know, times where they looked like proper teams, where they looked in sync. Uh, particularly, the, I think the Farmers' Focus fire was very impressive, given their players who not really played together, the very, very uh, variety of skill levels as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there, there was always going to be, you know, four or five mo- moments here or there for, you know, a few minutes where it would just get into a bit of a clown fiesta, a little bit of a DM fest, and that could be... You know, maybe not for the purists, but it could be entertaining to watch at least. Is it as entertaining in the logs as it is over in the stream? Let's have a look now. I'm scooting over. I'm da- assaulting by damage, and the first thing I see is the uh, missed experience, the Grand Prix El Presidente of the uh, the market when it comes to the little draft screen. I think he costs the most. Nevo. That's why he got, he's got thirty one kills, the top damage in the server as well. He didn't win the game, but uh, he won the logs. Yeah, I I win, but my team lose. That was a, a clear clear moment of that for Niva. I mean, he did very well. He was uh, just trying to utilize his DM presence on the flank whenever he could, but unfortunately, you know, when you've got uh, that kind of thing going for you. Uh, you know, he had to kind of do everything in terms of killing players on the flank, but also leading his team uh, with the beam as well. So it was uh, kind of difficult for him. It was kind of all his back. The rest of his team wasn't quite up to the same level as their opponents, and it uh, sort of showed. Man, Dave, you've got so many different factors that kind of contribute to these things. You've got players that have never played together. Players that are playing classes they've ne- they're have not used to playing in a regular sort of game outside of pug. You've got people that are used to very high standards, people that are used to very, very low standards and all of this. What do you think is going to be the most tripping factor for a lot of these teams or anything that sticks out to you personally that would just bother you if you were playing in these teams? Uh, I honestly think the kind of X factor maybe is like having a good main caller because, you know, you obviously have like strong main callers in Prem and stuff, but if being able to main call for you know three open players or whatever is kind of a different kind of skill and if players are not like familiar with your cause if players are not exactly sure what's going on that could be a thing and that might be something that's not necessarily picked up by the you know the the draft system by the kind of price that players have like how much they contribute in terms of leadership all right i guess you guys were all wondering well if this is uh round five what do we got for round for six well don't worry don't go anywhere because uh we're soon going to be on in a way with our round six but in the meantime we will go to a teeny tiny small ish break just to kind of make sure we you know get all the players into the right place pick the optimum map in and also listen to what dum dum has to say and yeah in the meantime uh we'll see you soon <laughs> 